Please join me in welcoming Past Commander John Francella. Thank you, Ernie. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor for me to be here with all of you as we pay tribute to all our veterans that have served our great nation. But I'm also here today to speak and pay tribute to those veterans who answered the call of duty during World War II and the Korean War. On December 7, 1941, the United States was pulled into a war which had been going on for years when Japan made the decision to attack Pearl Harbor. At that time, our nation's people answered the call to service. These veterans served in every branch and in every theater of the conflict during the next four years. They served at home, at sea, on the battlefields from North Africa, Italy, France, and Germany, to Burma, China, the islands of the Pacific, and over the skies of Japan. They were ordinary Americans called from every walk of life to resist and ultimately vanquish the most powerful armed forces ever raised on earth. These hard-fought soldiers faced the tyranny of Japan's wartime leaders and engaged in a litany of hard-won American victories. The Jimmy Doolittle raid that dropped bombs in the heart of Tokyo only four months after Pearl Harbor. The U.S. Navy's triumph over the Japanese fleet at Midway and the grueling island wars that wrestled Guadalcanal, Guam, Saipan, Iwo Jima, and Okinawa from Japanese hands. When our troops swept across the French countryside and into the forests of Belgium and Luxembourg, they came not to take, but to give back. When our forces stormed the beaches of Normandy, they came not as conquerors, but as liberators. It was unknowable then but so much of the progress that would define the 20th century came down to a battle for a slice of beach only six miles long and two miles wide. There were over 16 million men and women who served in the armed forces during World War II. Sadly, over 290,000 lost their lives in battle and over another 113,000 more lives were lost in non-theater service. Over 670,000 servicemen received non-fatal wounds during this war, with another 130,201 servicemen captured and held as prisoners of war. Of these, 14,072 died while in captivity. Over four years of intense fighting, with the tragic loss of life totaling in the millions of military servicemen and innocent civilians, treaty papers were signed on the USS Missouri to end the war. Just think, the signing of the treaty in an event like World War II, which changed so many lives forever, only took 23 minutes to complete. But only five years later, on June 25, 1950, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea launched a surprise attack on South Korea. People in South Korea were unaware of the upcoming attack on that morning, which started a war that would last over three years. Together with the men and women from 20 other nations, the Americans joined the first mission of the United Nations to preserve peace, fighting side by side to safeguard other Asian nations, nations from attack, and to protect the freedom that remains our greatest gift to this day. The Korean War veterans endured terrible hardships, deathly cold, weeks and months crammed into foxholes and bunkers, facing an enemy of overwhelming numbers. They faced the threat of brutal imprisonment and torture, defending the perimeter of Busan, braving the tides at Ishan, and confronting the world's fastest fighter jets in Meg Alley and enduring hand-to-hand -hand combat in Heartbreak Ridge and Pork Chop Hill. There were over 6.8 million American women, men and women, who served during the Korean period. There were over 54,000 deaths to Americans in service during the periods of hostilities. 
7,140 servicemen were captured and held as prisoners of war, and of these, only 4,418 returned to the United States. The Korean War has long been regarded as one book title called it, America's Forgotten War. But that simply is not the case. Today, thanks to the service and sacrifice of our veterans six decades ago, South Korea has grown strong and independent. They're a trusted ally, an economic power, and a democracy, a provider of security in the Asian Pacific region and other parts of the world. To the veterans of this war, your sacrifice made a difference. So today, we give thanks to our veterans who served in these two wars and valiantly fought for freedom and order. But who were these soldiers in uniform? As I said earlier, they came from ordinary places and were ordinary people. They were called Yank and GI, Swabby and Flyboy. They were Wax and Waves, Leathernecks, or they were just called Plain Joe. It should not surprise us that during our present difficult times, we should turn to the example set by that generation, a generation that demonstrated resilience, humor, and courage, often under difficult conditions. Their example and those memories should be kept alive by younger generations as they in turn strive to keep the peace in our troubled world. But there's another reason why we must never forget these veterans. An act of remembrance is an act of honor to those who sacrificed all, who bore the sufferings of war, who had wisdom to build the peace. It is a tribute to you, the veterans. All of our World War II and Korea War vets fought to preserve democracy and freedom, not just in America, but around the world. That's why these veterans deserve the best we can give them. They deserve the highest honor and our deepest gratitude. But never forget, these veterans didn't sacrifice in vain. They bled and died to defeat the greatest threat to freedom the world has ever seen. And today, the men and women who fought these wars are justifiably part of what is called the greatest generation. The sacrifices of these men and women are the reason liberty still exists because they stood up to tyranny. They are truly the greatest of the greatest generation. We are grateful today for those among us who along with their family and friends sacrificed so much during the great conflicts of World War I, II, excuse me, II, and the Korean War. We thank you for your service to the nation during the war, and we thank you as well for your service to families, communities, and society as a whole in all the years since those wars concluded. We are mindful of the fact that many sacrificed their very lives on the fields and on the seas and in the air where the battles of the war were fought. We remember them today with great reference and thanksgiving. We are also mindful that over 1,200 of our World War II and Korea veterans are leaving us each day. So we are grateful for this opportunity so we can tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I would now like to have all, if, if able, all World War II and Korea veterans, please stand, and if you're not able to stand, at least raise your hand, please. All World War II and Korea veterans, let's give them a round. Thank you for your service. Thank you, John.